Hey everyone, my name is Michael and today I want to have a look at Hot Chocolate 14. Over the next couple of weeks we will release new episodes featuring on specific new features in Hot Chocolate 14. Today I want to have a look at a feature called Is Selected. What it is, we're gonna find out. So I have here a project and this is our new demo workshop project that we will use over the next couple of weeks. It's basically an iteration on Microsoft's eShop but nicer. Okay, let's have a look at my API layer here and let's go to our queries type. So I have here an order query type and this guy has here one single resolver that resolves the order by ID. And the issue here is that we actually have a layer in between. So we have here a get order query, which allows us to query our read model. In this instance, I can just ask here for an ID and then I get the order object. But this query has here a parameter which actually is called with details. So I can pass into this query an information if I want to have the order, just the top level properties, or also relations like the address and stuff like that from my order. So this was already possible with Hot Chocolate 13, where I could write a middleware, for instance, that inspected the selection set and then determined if certain fields are there that other informations need to be loaded. Right? Let me show you actually how we did that with Hot Chocolate 13. So in Hot Chocolate 13, we would inject the resolver context. And from the resolver context, we had something called the get selections method. And this get selections method, while it works very nice for our internal things, is quite complex. So we have to pass in here in type context that represents the object type that actually is selected here. So I can determine the selections we have on. Think about abstract types. Like if this field returned an interface, then the child selections could be different depending on which instance type I return, right? So I would need to pass that in. I could do that by inspecting the selection type here, then getting the type, then from the type get the name type, I cast that to an object type, and then it would get the selections for this object type and I could inspect them. So in this case, I would just iterate over them or do an any check on them. And then for instance, look if the address is selected, right? And then we could pass in this is address selected into our get order query, right? So let's debug that quickly. I'm starting the server and then we go to banana cake pop and I already prepared here a query and we could just fetch the data, right? So we can see here that is selected is false in this case because we didn't select the address. We just get the status, so a top level field. So let's skip over that, update our query. So we added here address and city and now we rerun it and you can see now is selected is true because we selected this address field so our child field. And then we could load more data or less data, depending on the flag, right? But it got even more complicated if we want to have a lower level field, right? In this case, we would have to take the selection here, the address selection, and then we have to iterate over it again. So this means we would essentially do a first or default. So we knew now that address is selected if we do just an address is not null. But then to check, for instance, if city is selected, we would have to go deeper and say context.getSelections. We again need to collect the type context, this time from the selection here. So we say address type, name type, and then we again cast that to an object type. If that would be an interface, we would need to iterate over the possible types of this field and then check for each of these type cases if a field is there, right? So you can see it's quite tedious to do that. While possible, it's not really nice to use as an end user. Again, to go on here, I would pass in the address and then again, I get selections. out. Okay, so this is a ton of code. And what we want to do with Hot Chocolate is actually simplifying all this tedious code that you have to do when you follow patterns like DDD, clean architecture, CQRS, or what have you, right? Okay, let me wipe that out and let me show you how we can do that with Hot Chocolate 14. So in Hot Chocolate 14, we could just define here a boolean called with details, right? And this boolean we could annotate and say is selected. And then we just say is selected address. And then we pass this into our query here and we are basically done. We can run that. Go to banana cake pop. 
when we run that, you can see here that is selected is true because address is selected. So we can just let that go. And then you can see everything is fine here, right? If I remove that, we run that, and you can see with details is false. So as I expected, very simple. But there's another case here. In this case, our type has multiple relations, right? So if I go, for instance, in the items, the items that I ordered and I want to get the product here, for instance, then run that. You can see with details is false, which is correct. And then actually my query here returns null for the items because I didn't fetch them, right? I didn't indicate that I need some of the relations. To get that in, we can just copy this and then say, I want to have this true if either address is there or items is there. And then we can just rerun that and refetch that. And you can see now with details is true also when just items is selected. And now I get here also my product item that I ordered. So let's make it one more bit complex. And that is if we want to have lower level items. And we thought a bit about that. In many cases, when you want to go deeper than that, you actually want to have a more sophisticated API, so not an attribute. In these cases, you want to inject the resolver context. And on the resolver context, we now have two new helpers. So the first one is called is selected. So basically this guy is what we call in our middleware attribute here on the argument, right? But if I want to go deeper, I can say select. So I want to select items and then I want to have a look if product is selected. Okay, that's easy. Like uh, we can check up a child item is selected. We could go even deeper, right? Say get me items then get me product and then check on product what is happening, right? But we thought a bit further. What if you now want to inspect what is actually happening on the selections? Maybe you want to collect the members that are associated with the field, right? In this case, the selected field here is always an enumeration. So I can just say select from this thing here the field and from the field, I want to have the member. And maybe I want to have an array from that. We make that items and then you're done. So it's so easy now to use this new API to collect selections like you could before, but with a much simpler syntax here, or just inspect if something is selected and pass that to your downstream layers. So what do you think? This really simplifies things. I know that is not a use case that everybody has. Some people just expose a queryable and use projections, but this allows you now to build something like projections on top of hot chocolate without implementing the query provider or in a layered architecture like I have here to just inspect if something is used and then pass that as simple flex to your repository service or what have you. Don't forget to help us by starring our GitHub repository. A star on GitHub is the easiest contribution you can do to any open source project. And by doing so, widening the reach of the project itself. Okay, I see you next time.